everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique house. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's up? Nothing, nothing, you know, my dad. What go on? Man, hey, man, make sure you guys like and subscribe to Boss Talk 101, man. We out here in Los Angeles. Yo, man, hey, man, listen, man, we got a guy here today. But hold on, before you get into that, y'all got to make sure y'all do the Patreon. That's where y'all going to find our full-length interviews after a while. Let me tell you, we spoiling you right now doing it on YouTube, but just do our membership. Small little jingle, jingle, jangle change to get our membership. Do it. You will see all our full-length interviews on our Patreon. It's under Boss Talk Podcast 101 on Patreon. Thank man, you. she's trying to pay the bills, y'all, man. Hey, man, <laughs> Freeway, Ricky, Ross is in the building. Yes, yes, what up? What man, up? how you doing, man? I'm, you know, right now, uh, I'm having a stint with high blood pressure. Man, you know. Man, but you a vegan, and you, I mean, you eat right, you work out. Yeah. How? Well, you know, I was I was talking to Chef Barbette the other day. I called her, and, and I was like, Chef, you know, I, I try to eat the right foods. And, and then she was like, well, you know, you eat out a lot, and... And you don't know what them people put in your food mm -hmm. to make it taste good. And, right. And, and me, I don't eat for taste. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eat you know, for health. I try as to we eat get to older. Live, right. You know? So, um, I just woke up a couple nights ago, man, and, and unbeknown to me, and my head just felt kind of funny, and I was like, you know what? Maybe I should just go to the doctor. Yeah. And lucky I did. I went in. It was like three thirty in the morning, and my blood pressure was one hundred and eighty nine. Wow. Over one oh one, which is is stroke and heart attack right. levels, you know, and they was like shocked. I drove myself to the hospital. Wow. What was your symptoms? I didn't. Was really, headaches or no headaches? No, really, no symptoms, and, and that's why you know uh, they call uh, uh, high blood pressure the silent killer. The silent killer. And I didn't know none of this stuff, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because yeah. I never had no health problems, yeah. you know. Uh, so for me, it was a total shock, but. Uh, they say it can be managed, you know, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm managing it now. I'm fasting. Uh, I'm, I'm getting ready to do a, a cleanse, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 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 where I detox Reset your system. And, and I'm exercising again rigorously, you know. Uh, I used to rec exercise rigorously. I thought you played tennis anyway. Well, I play with my kids, but that's not enough, enough, not enough. to... to, to to really generate the, the type of activity that I need, you know, mm -hmm. I, have to, I have to increase my activity. So I'm working on that now. Uh, but other than that, you know, uh, things things are pretty good. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I, I just know that, man. You know, I, talking to you last time, I know you got relationships with doctors and 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 stuff. You know, last time you was telling me about a doctor that was telling you about COVID. So I know you know who to call. Yeah, I, I called, know you. I already called him. <laughs> <laughs> That's the I one thing, him. doctor. Um, uh, Washington and Chef Barbed and mm -hmm. Ricky Poo. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm hitting everybody up now, getting all the information I can. A lot of my friends, I didn't know that so many people had high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, they do. It, it's all our people. So, like we wouldn't believe. Like every one of my friends have have had high blood pressure. So let me ask you a question: You're gonna start cooking at home now and eating your own food instead of eating out all the time? Well, what I'm gonna do is get me a meal prepper. Mm -hmm. You know, because my schedule is so rigorous mm -hmm. that that I can't I can't cook myself. You, you can't know, cook I yourself. Just, no, I can't do you, it. You're always going twenty four seven seven days a week. Yes, my my schedule starts at what, what I did do too. I put my phone to the side, mm -hmm. you know, in the morning. So mm -hmm. now I'm, I'm not gonna start answering my phone to about. Uh, six in the morning. Okay. You know, most mornings I'm up at like four in the morning mm -hmm. answering phones from people on the East Coast. But I'm going to slow that down. Just try to slow my life down a mm -hmm. little bit. You know, uh, uh, instead of go, 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 you know, uh, stop and smell some roses. Health is wealth. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's way more important. It is. <laughs> For real. It and is. people don't really think you about can't it. Buy, you can't buy good health. Correct. It, it, it's something you got to, you got to, you, you, you have to have peace. Mm -hmm. you, you think like when it comes to Anger and all these different things. But I don't. I don't do you really, believe I don't that? Really get angry. That's what I'm saying. You real laid you know, back. It's like it's like so many of the things that they say triggers it. Triggers it. But now stress, you know, and, and stress is something that you you can don't carry know. stress and don't know, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm finding out that most of my time of my spikes is at night when I'm sleep. Yeah. Really? Yeah. During the daytime. Dreaming. 
dreaming. You know, I have nightmares about being in prison. Yeah, and, yeah. And and most of my you still dreams, do? I still do. I still have nightmares about prison. Really? Uh, you you got to realize he did, I 20, did twenty years. years. Yeah. I know, <clears throat> but you've been out for a while, and you've been so busy keeping yourself years. preoccupied. But your subconscious mind, subconscious mind, is locked in your subconscious mind. Wow. That's why it's one of the most important things that we have to learn is to control our subconscious mind. How? Well, whatever we feed it is what it picks up on. Yeah, so so we 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 have to really mm-hmm. just be conscious of mm-hmm. of everything that we're feeding our mind, mm-hmm. you know? Cuz most of my dreams are about business. Mm-hmm. And it's usually about business where I barely make it. It's like this real tense situation and and we struggling and we struggling and I barely make it, or, you know. So I, I imagine And that's your dream? Those are my dreams. Those okay. are the things that I dream about. Like, I don't dream about being on Fantasy Island or... No, because you say you dream a lot about being in prison, too, but that's not a dream of in prison. No, 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 no. Um, it's either being in prison or, or about the business. Kind of business. You, you, you got to understand, my friend, like, I, I was locked up when he passed away. Mm-hmm. And, and for that years, you. I used to dream about him until one Recently. time I dreamed, and I told you about yeah, it, last I went year. to... He died in my dream. Yeah. And I never have dreamed about him no more. I wish I could stop dreaming of dying. My prison system would die. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, just, I, I mean, I have dreams of me selling cocaine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The police kicking the door in mm-hmm. and me going back to prison. And then all my friends are sitting there like, we knew you was coming back. You know? I wonder if our subconscious is because that is a fear that we have subconsciously. I wonder if that's the reason why subconsciously you dream about certain things because it's fears. It is. It yeah. is. It's a, it's a fear, and it's also an addiction. Mm. Mm. You know. You know, selling drugs is an addiction. Right. You know. So, uh, quite naturally, if you uh, done it as long as I did it, you know, and uh, enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it, that it because a challenge. It was a challenge. But then, but hold on. But then you turn your business. You come out and because one thing he's always told me is when we started out selling clothes and stuff like that, he would use it as like that's the drug game because we would go hustle the clothes and we would go. I love the adrenaline rush of being on the street selling the clothes and walking up to people and be like, hey, especially making a lot of money doing it. And I can see how I can, you know, think about that as a drug game. So even like you with your entrepreneurship, last time when we had our interview, you said that you just use all your principles from the drug game to your entrepreneurship and so forth. So that's why I'm like, it should be the same. Well, it is kind of, I mean, the games are the same, Mm -hmm. but I haven't been able to take those nightmares out of my system Mm -hmm. to where I only think about the stuff that I'm doing now. Now, I don't have... Uh, a prison dreams every night, mm-hmm. you know, and then and then you know sometimes we don't even know what we dream about. Right. You know, sometimes we don't. You don't remember. remember. I can remember though when I wake up, you know, for a moment, and, and then you forget and after I'm like, a while. Wow, that was I'm that's glad, crazy. I'm glad that was a dream. Dream. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's that's real. It gets so livid to where I would dream that I was like I was dream stuff and it would happen mm-hmm. while I was locked up. I would dream it and. Oh, Maybe. no question. Dreams are, yeah. are a form of things to come. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Not all, but some. <laughs> Not all, but most of them. Or Jamaicans would say, dream don't walk straight. That's what Jamaicans would say. Dreams don't walk straight. Because when I say that, some people can dream things and it happened and people be like, that's deja vu. But it's really something you dreamt and then it happened. But some dreams, it's like you have to have it interpreta- interpreted. You know what I mean? Like right. you dream about fish. And then Jamaicans would say, oh, somebody's pregnant. Right, right. I heard that. Well, well, I believe that dreams are a form of you predicting what the future is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a vision where you visualize something to come. And and, and that's how I see it, Mm -hmm. is is, is a vision, you know, where I can see myself... In, in business, I mean, if if you go back and and you look at some of the articles that I did when I was in prison, and I'm talking about these dreams in these articles, and now mm-hmm. all the things that I talked about in those dreams are manifesting themselves right now in 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 the world. And dreams wow. prepare you for different things because <clears throat> I can remember one dream in particular that um, I think that dream prepared me for my father's death. 
because it was a dream that happened and it was so weird because of what I saw in the dream and then no later than probably a month later I got that call yeah. and I knew that that dream that's what that dream was yeah wow yeah I was gonna ask you about like um just lately you know I've been seeing you I, I did see the podcast you had spoke about that I want to say that while I'm thinking about it is it beat beat it was you was on a podcast or either you do a podcast this was a but this was virtual when I seen you and it was with the guy out of Chicago I think uh, oh, uh beat what the heck is the name of that thing <laughs> it's beat Dave, something Dave man. Dave made it but it's beat King Break beats. Break, Break, beats. Break beats. Are you really affiliated with those guys, or you just did that with them? Well, Dave is my partner. I, I, you know, uh, it's crazy. When when I went to prison, uh, it was the first time I ever saw the Source magazine. When it was only like really? two pages. Yeah, and uh, I wrote Dave a letter when I was in prison. He didn't get the letter, uh, but I wanted to invest into the Source magazine. Yeah, I kind of saw where it was going, and. Uh, he never responded, but later on in life, when I got out, he contacted me and was like, man, I got a podcast idea. So me and him went together and did the podcast. And, uh, you know, I, I help him with however I can. You know? Yeah. But that's his company, Breakbeats. is him and his... Uh, do, and do, his so, you, I mean, will you, you, I'll still be seeing you on there? Is that something you're going to continue to do? Uh, we're going to... Uh, uh, I think we're going to continue to do the, the, the Snowfall yeah, uh, yeah. Thing where we go in and we analyze snowfall. That was all his idea. You know, I, I was totally uh, against snowfall. I didn't want to have nothing to do with it. Yeah, snowfall I remember you or, telling me. Or talk about it or anything. But Yeah, that's what you said last show. Yeah, but once he, he, he brought it to me and, and I thought it was a good idea. And, and you know, it's so much, so much false stuff that's being uh, given to our people. And I thought it was a good idea to, to kind of set the record straight. Fact because when, when, you, when you look at snowfall, and, and you think that all of this stuff was going on, you know, all the killings and, and the way they sold drugs, and, and you're like, man, they selling these false narratives too, still, you know? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> that's, that's, that's bad for, for, because it's not even real. It's promoting, I believe that it's promoting violence, it promotes selling drugs, and to, to, to first of all, for John to do the show, I thought was, 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 was distasteful, you know, me and him having dinner and lunch together and, and he not tell me that he's doing this show. I thought that was kind of distasteful. Uh, and then not to call me and ask me as a consultant. You know, at least you would have, I mean, right now we got a lot of guys that actually sold drugs in L.A. right now that's gotten out of prison, did a lot of time. And for you not to consult with somebody who really lived that lifestyle, I mean, ain't a time for America to really see how people start to sell drugs, why they sell drugs. I, I mean, I believe they need the, 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 the real, the true facts about the drug business. They don't want to change it, though. They don't want to. It's an industry that the country makes millions of dollars off of. Yeah. Billions. No billions. Money. Yeah, billions. So why change? The they prison, don't want to change it. The prison industry alone probably is like $58 billion a year, 60 something billion dollars right. a year. Right. So... Like why, you know, they don't want to find a, a cure for this. Well, some people don't. But if, if, if you had a, a child or a brother or uncle or a father or a sister or a mother that was on drugs, then you want a cure. Mm -hmm. Do you, like when you think back to when you first started uh, dealing with drugs and dealing with these different uh, communities, uh, dealing with the drug game, can you even think back to the first? Because I, I forget a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? I listen to a lot of your interviews. But do you, do you really reflect back? Because I can remember taking something from my uncle. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I got started. I, I remember. No, I know but exactly how I got started. How did you get started? I had a friend who called me and said that he had something that was new. And it was going to be the biggest thing to hit the, hit the, hit the planet for a while. And, and, and I went and he showed it to me. I didn't believe him. He told me to go and try it. And, and that's what I did. And, and did you take it? No, no, no. I didn't use it. That's one thing I, Not I, I asked. Not but at I, that time. <laughs> okay, I asked him a question the other day, and I'm going to ask you. And I, I always like when I watch the movies Don't and ask somebody. It. Don't ask it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm serious. When you watch a movie because I watch movies, that's how I learn a lot of this stuff. And they ain't gonna show you nothing. No and, they cut the bag and they taste and they cut, it. Like you have to, like do you that have to not, taste it to make sure you're getting the good product that nobody's selling you no when, flour? When I first started, I did do that. 
Okay. I never did I, that. I would have people that would. That's what it, I did. Uh, would tell me if it was good, but it got to a point to where you no longer needed to to taste it or anything like that. You put in a, a shaker bottle and. Throw some oh. baking soda on there and some heat. No, oh, it's going to tell you. And then you know if it's good or not. Yeah, for sure. Oh, okay. Throw okay. it back on that scale and <laughs> you see where they come back. You know? oh, okay. Yeah. I was okay. going to ask you, what's the most money you ever had to count with a group of people in your life? Like $3.2 million. How long did it take? I don't even remember, man. <laughs> that's you know, a long had, time. We had, we had, you had counters, the counters, of course. Counters. But that still takes a long time. Now, when it was bad, when you had to count that shit by hand, that was like, <laughs> yeah, that took forever. Hey, guess what? I ain't selling dope today because I ain't counting no money. <laughs> no, I no money ain't counting no money today. No, man. man. Like, and and just to try to clean it up. Like, what was one of the, some of the resources that you used to clean it up? Be dealing with that much money, or did you even care to clean it? I mean, it's, it's you know, it's easy to clean money. We dealt with detail shops in the country. You know, that, it was the weakest little way that we had our little money. Everybody knew what was going on. Person get a detail shop, or if a person take and, and try to figure out ways to put stuff in his mama name, you already know these avenues are being everybody, taken. Everybody, you know, that's the, everybody lucky. know it. My mama had twenty four brothers and sisters. So, you know, <laughs> oh, I, wow. I had a lot of people I could slide in, <laughs> slide in their name. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, unk. Mm -mm, I'd be scared. But, I'd be like, I don't trust none of, of them. That, though, when, when, when they put in the newspaper, you got a life sentence, all that property become theirs. You know? Yeah. You yeah. don't yeah. need that. <laughs> yeah. All they're going to do is give it to that girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. You don't, so, you don't think about it. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, the, the drug business is, 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 is it's a ruthless business, you know, yeah. and, and it's stressful. You know, when I went to prison, my ulcers was messed up. You know, I used to walk around with a bottle of that Maylock. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I drink it like water. <laughs> Wow, did you did you go through times of paranoia? Like a lot, I dealt with paranoia. Like I was paranoid. I thought everybody and from everybody that talked to me. That's what I'm paranoid saying. Paranoid from the police. Yeah, I thought everybody was working with them. Yeah, because you don't know who might be undercover. You don't know you who might be a rat. All that talking on the phone. One phone for two, three weeks and changing <laughs> and all kind of stuff. Did you always talk in code to everybody or only to certain people? Like it became a habit when you said certain things. Well, we really didn't talk on the phone much. You know, it was very, hey, meet me at the restaurant. <laughs> meet, me at the, meet me at the Two Sisters restaurant. You know, mm -hmm. meet me over here. Meet me at M&M's. You know, that was basically the, the conversation that we would have. Uh, the thing about mine is that my informant, who was my partner, was wired, so mm. it didn't matter. You know, he decoded the whole conversation in court. Yeah, I I remember a time when it was a drought, and I went to Houston, and I, I can remember a guy took me to the wrong spot. I told him, meet me at the Super One. But when he met me, he met me, and then he took me around this corner. And in my mind, I was already angry because it had been a drought, and it had nothing been moving in so long. I was totally ticked off with this guy to where it, came, it became violent soon as we even got out the car because I felt like he betrayed me. And I felt like he was trying to do me because I didn't really know him. Right. These are the things that happen when you're trying to deal with droughts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Did you ever have like a that? drought? I had droughts, but my droughts was never to where I was really going. I, no, I did. I did, <laughs> I did deal with people that I didn't, didn't know. know. But the person that I was doing the deal with was supposed to know the person. Yeah. You know? mm. yeah. So, uh, this, but, but this, you know, this is such a but, trust. Like, it's hard to trust people. You can't trust people in that but game. But it's... it's it goes the same way throughout, you know. Through life. Through life with all these businesses, whatever you're in. I mean, it's hard to trust people, you know. But the difference is when you're in a legitimate business and, yes, it's hard to trust people, but you're not going to go to prison behind somebody else if it's a legal business compared to when it's illegal and you don't trust somebody, they can send you to but, prison for life. But they worse. They you, worse. You might have to kill these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember Dame Dash saying something about when he he was owed some money by a, a corporate American. It was so the way they treat you is even worse because they can't do they can't even handle the situation that they creating. Right. I agree with that because mm -hmm. you know they, they they do it behind you know paperwork computers and you have to face off with people who they're weaker than you. But they just know how to play the game. Yeah, and they take more chances. They you take know. chances. You know, they, 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 they're gonna tell you, kill me. Mm -hmm. You know, in the street, they ain't gonna say that, but they know you might do <laughs> it. <laughs> what you say? On the say? street, they be like, oh, don't kill me. I'm gonna take care of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. But um, what do you say to people in the game right now who feel like? Man, I got my partners that they, they down with me, they this, they that. Because I feel like no matter how much you grew up with this person or they're your family, your mama, daddy, whoever, if 
threatened in the right way by the cops, like to take away your kids, your auntie, your uncle, whoever. Anybody can turn. Oh, for sure. Well, I, won't, I won't say anybody because there, there are guys who, who, who stand up, you know. Uh, but, but I wouldn't take a chance. You know, why, why take a chance on uh, getting into something that the guy might be forced to have to tell on you? Yeah, you know, yeah. His life might be on the line yeah. uh, for him to tell on you. But some guys, you know, some guys swallow those pills. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I've, been, I've been around. Like, it's, it's, I look at Young Thug and his situation that he's going through. I already know these conversations is going to get very, 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 very intense when you're dealing with people who been around you and know everything that you got going and they away from family and they never been in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, at least I had a few tickets and I had been locked up and I knew what I was up against. And I had been through situations where I was in the county for a while. But and I had I didn't roll like but sometimes people you, you get the wrong people in the crowd and, and, and you don't know what they're going to do when they go in these rooms. Bro. No, no. You know, when we used to see guys come in with 10 and 15 guys, we'd be like, <laughs> We gonna tell. <laughs> <laughs> you can almost predict. It, Did you, know? you? How do you? Do you even? I know you try to stay focused on what you got going, but when you hear things was going on with Young Thug and the way that that situation is unfolding, how do you? What do you think about that? Well, you know, I met Young Thug. Man. You met him? Yeah, he came out to uh, to one of my barbershop signings. Wow. In Atlanta, and and I talked to him, and we swapped numbers, and I think we talked on the phone one time, and and I was trying. To, to, to really reel the young brother in. You yeah, know, that's like, that's hard. Look, man, you're in a great position in your life. You can really help your hood. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but, but a lot of times we get, we get confused and, and we thinking that the money we make legally can be doubled or tripled if we go back, back to, to the, the streets. streets. And it's like, man, the street dudes is trying to get out of the streets. Mm -hmm. Why are you guys trying to go back into the streets? So we just got to purvey a message to our young people that, that, that they got to... Uh they gotta learn how to compete with corporate America, man. That's where the real money is. No, I agree 100%. And we can compete, you know, like... Um, to me, it seems... Oh, man, it seems so simple. You know, the way these guys, you know... I, I met some of the <laughs> biggest people in Hollywood, man, and I'll be like... How this guy get his job? Really? Mm -hmm. You know, we got to go and check who his mom and daddy is. Yeah. You know, a lot of times, those people will will they, they, their mom and dad will prop them up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To exactly. Make them look like something that they really they really not. not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah got to do your research and figure out. But even like that's the one thing I've always um, tried to help with young kids because especially coming up in the music game, we've interviewed a lot of people in the music game, and they will still be sticking in the, in the streets. But some of these people are even bigger in the music, making a lot of money. Even like Mo three, you know, God rest his soul, that passed away. He was heavy still in the streets, but then his music was still up here, and he was going like, like leave that alone. Like, why wouldn't you? But I could never understand why they can't leave the streets alone. Well, well, and what you said made sense about you know how they felt about the money, and and the fact that most of these guys got their start from street dudes, right? You know, that's right. Who, who got who got a hundred dollars an hour for a studio? You go to the dope man. You go to the dope man. <laughs> that's real. Yeah. So so a lot of them get their their start from there, and they feel loyal to that. Yeah. Uh, particular aspect of, of life. So I, I don't know. We interviewed in New Orleans. Um, Big Boz, Anthony Boswell, do you know who that is? No. Because he mentioned in the interview that um, in his paperwork, you know how yeah, when you go to prison, whatever, you got your paperwork back. And for some reason in his paperwork, your name was in the paperwork. Oh, man, I saw that. Yeah, he did saw, say that. I it was before that. he went. He said so that that's what he was how saying. Did that, that, guy, uh, that guy was bullshit from the start. You know what I'm your, saying? So your name so was not in you know in him? I never heard of him before. Then why? That, so you don't see so your, your name was not in his paperwork. He wouldn't know if he don't know it. I don't know the guy. I never heard of him. But the stuff that he was saying, he, this was something that happened in Oklahoma. In, yeah, right. in Oklahoma in eighty. What did he say? Eighty four mm -hmm. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it there. was early on. Nobody even implemented the CIA into drug dealing into ninety six. Mm. Oh, okay. So no. So there's no way your name could have been on his paperwork. How could it? How could it? I had never been to jail in, in 84. I didn't go to jail until uh, 89. Wow. <clears throat> wow, that's crazy. Because maybe, is, but your name is, he maybe the name no, wrong? He had, he, he had the name right. What, what, you, what people do, 
And and you know, I don't know if you heard on there, but he was talking about that snowfall was based off of his life and. No, I didn't hear that part, but yeah. we, we talked to him. We interviewed him, and he told us that. Because I asked him, because I seen a little bit of that. And I was like, so how was Freeway? Because I had interviewed you. So I was like, how did his name end up in your paperwork? And I don't think he went into deep detail. He just no. said he don't know how. He said, because he, he don't up. know you. He never met you. But I'm like, how? why would they put his name in your paperwork if y'all don't know each other? That exactly. don't make no sense. Absolutely no sense. So, I mean, do you have, you've had your name used in a lot of situations. And I heard you say on one interview that I think you said three or four people that misuse your name as far as, you know, like trying to use your name or trying to do different things with well, your name. Well, people, you know, people are cloud chasers, you know, and, and they don't want to do the work. You know, wow. a lot of people don't want to get out here and, and earn their position, you know, so it's easier to, to, to drop a name, you know, and, and have nothing to back it. No, I get it 100%. So, Do you... Um, so I, I didn't even... You didn't even entertain it. No, I didn't even, This is the first time I ever even mentioned it. Mentioned it. I, but yeah. when I heard him talk, you know, and even the interviewer, you know, I felt that he should have said, where's your paperwork? You know, what's, yeah. the, what's the court number? You know, yeah. what's the doc number? Yeah. Let's go pull that up out of the docs. You know, because you know, you know, like I do, the, the court papers is, is, is a record. Yeah, yeah, and you can get them. You can actually pull them back up. Should be able to pull them up any time. Yeah. It's public records, right? So when, when I heard him saying that, you know, I mean, why would you mention somebody that you never met and never met you? Wow. You know, how would I even know? I mean, how would he? I don't know. It, it was just a waste of time. No, nothing to. to what, what about the Frank Lucas? I, I, you and him back in the days, did you kind of. I never met Frank. Never met Frank? I met Frank. Uh, Louis Farrakhan did a, a, a drug a podium, and we met there. Because his was a, his time was a little before yeah, your he time. Was before my time. That's right, and it was more. I guess he did heroin. Heroin yeah, was we the thing back then. We were different, totally different. Yeah. Who was who was the who was the who you think? And I'm not trying to put uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> who was the like like the movement was like the biggest movement? Was it that heroin movement or was it the crack? I don't know. I don't know. I don't really even, <laughs> I don't you know really, that? you know, I, I mean, I, I talk about my past a little bit, but that's not really what I, I'm You passed on. it? I'm past that. You're you know, trying to make it through. Me, people ask me, oh, who had more money, you or Meech? And I'd be like. Meech, yeah, I didn't even think that's about what, that. No, I was you about to ask <laughs> Yeah, I was, the only thing I wanted to say. People ask you that. Matter. No, it wasn't the money part I was going to ask about <clears> with Meech. I was watching the BMF documentary the other day, and I know when you watch shows or documentary, you're like, how much of this is really true? And, but then the only thing I saw where they mentioned on you is when he was walking through the casino and they were introducing you know, people and you, you, somebody was acting as you. Oh, yeah, this is Freeway Rick Ross from the, the whatever. Was that true where you met him in the casino for the first time? Do you I, even remember that? I don't remember meeting Meech. And you don't even remember? I, first time I met Meech is when, when they got arrested. And uh, Wendy Day wrote me a letter and asked me if I would uh, talk to him about his case. Oh, okay. And so we, we kind of built up a friendship through mm -hmm. letters. And when I got out of prison, we talked on the phone a few times until, mm -hmm. uh, until I wasn't able to take his calls anymore behind so, my appeal. So when we wow. see documentaries, documentaries don't mean that it's... Well, that's not a documentary. That's that's a that's scripted, just a si scripted it's series, a scripted right? Series, yeah. No, not a BMF movie. The the, the documentary, documentary is so what I actually watched. It was his, his documentary. Name, wow! And they showed that part where it was in the documentary. It was in the well, documentary. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was. You know, at that time, it, right? It could have been. It showed you know, it he was walking he, through this. Where he saw me because I, I think he was in Atlanta. He was in Atlanta. And he was walking through the casino. No, I wasn't no. in a casino in Atlanta. Wasn't no casino in Atlanta. He would have had to be somewhere else. No, no in Vegas. No, Vegas. Uh, the casino might have been like an underground thing. It wasn't oh, no public oh, casino. It was like nah, a. No, <laughs> no. It, yeah, it wasn't no big only casino. Time, only time he would have probably saw me in the casino was during the fight time. Oh, I would, yeah, I would go. I don't gamble, uh, but you know, I started going to fights and, and you know. But do okay. you know that sometimes, like with these stories, that's why I was asking you about thinking back, trying to figure out and reflect on everything. There, I think there's going to be some truth, but everything's not going to be a hundred. Oh no! Even in my movie, you know, we got some stuff where 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 it'll be made where it's movie friendly. You know, mm -hmm. even with Gotta my make book, it exciting. With my book, it has to be you know some stuff in there that made it reader friendly. You know, if it had just been me telling a story. It's, it's not as exciting to the, to the reader, and, and you have to entice the reader, you know, mm -hmm. where, um, say, for instance, the writer talks about the shoes that they were wearing, or, you know, and, and some of that stuff is made up, you know, what kind of shoes they were wearing, because I didn't remember what kind of shoes I was wearing, but the writer knew 
what kind of shoes were being wore during that, during that time. time. And they just put it in there because, you know, it stretches it out. But and you've done a documentary on your life before, right? He did a few uh, of a few documents. Right, so in the in, when you do a documentary, is it 100% true? I tried my documentary. is Well, my documentary is Talking Heads. Mm. So it's just people coming on telling yeah, you I what, seen it. what yeah. they remember. It's okay. not, it's not a, a, a script. A walk through your yeah, life type like of thing. That. Narration. Okay. But can, like, let's bring up Kenny B, the guy that cut the young kid come on my show. And um, he, uh, he was on uh, pills, perks, the whole time, right? He'd been in the rap game. And um, recently he quit. And I was happy about that, actually. Yeah, probably. And, and yeah, basically. Lucky, lucky for him. He lucky, and, but tell him, I'll let you tell the story. No, so um, when he came on the show and he spoke about, um, he said that when he went to sign his deal, because, you know, when guys get in the music industry, they're eager, to, they have this drive, they want to make it, da, da, da. So he went to New York, got signed, and somebody introduced him to Perks. So he took the Perks, and the first time he took the Perks, you know, he loved it. You know, we human beings, we go through Man, issues, we go driving. through problems and stuff like that that and sometimes you tend to want to forget your problems so to him he's like when he took the perks it made him forget the problems and that was it so he got addicted he took it for four years and then one day I think he was losing so many friends dropping you know left right and center whether from perks or from different things you know and said, addiction got stronger addiction got stronger whatever and his music is so good where his cousin one of his cousins who used to sell it to him told him, I'm not going to sell you no more drugs. And they actually fought because he wanted that bad. That's how, yeah. that's how bad he was addicted to it. And they're like, I'm not, we, we're not going to sell because you're not doing the music like you used to. You don't have that drive no more. Because he said, when you on drugs, it tend to be like, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. You keep putting off stuff because you, you, you chill, you relax, and then life goes. So anyway, he put it out on social media that he gave up on it, and it was so surprising how many people reached out to him and was like, how are you knocking trying this? To get off how are you doing this? Because so many people want to knock this drug and can't. And even one of the guys who did you know, reach out to him and he told him how to do it, he said he would take aspirins for the headache and he would go running, he would drink a lot of water, try to flush up the system, but he's like, nobody warned him of that you're going to go through all the withdrawals for a whole Perks week. Is, you know, Perks is literally heroin. Mm. It's another form of heroin. One of the, wow. guys, one of the guys that rich out to him died three days later. But the reason I brought that up was because just the fact of fentanyl, you and know. They spiking, they spiking those with fentanyl. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Fentanyl, like, like you seeing all the stuff rushing through our people, this <clears throat> fentanyl thing, it's really worse to me than what crack was doing and all oh, for that. for sure. Because it's killing people. Well, you know, me and, me and one of my guys that, that, that I grew up with who, 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 who got pretty wealthy into, into the cocaine game, Little Tommy, yeah. we were talking the other day about guys killing their customers. Wow. Mm. You're literally killing your customers. Well, we but used but to why? Wonder. Why would you want to kill your customers? You, you need return customers. That's part of the game, though. They, that's part of the fitting our game, that some of your customers are going to die. Wow. And they, sometimes they get a kick out of, out of them dying because when, they, when you die, it makes the other ones want it. What if, what <clears> really? We, how are we going to get past this? I ask you because we've been in the game. We know what is the thing that can get us past this? Uh, well, everything comes down to being educated. You know, when our kids become educated to the fact that these things are and not only uh, addictive, but it also can kill you, I, I think that they'll, they'll wake up. I don't think we do enough education on, on drugs at all in this country. You know, uh, we spend 50 some billion dollars incarcerating, and I, I bet you the budget for um, prevention is much lower. And, uh, some of the books that I read said that a pound of, an uh, uh, ounce of cure, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. I so, heard that before. So we got to start thinking about cure. Get no, because it, it's so crazy because people, when they're addicted, especially once you take that first hit, yeah, you might know that's going to kill you. Yeah, you might know that it, this going to happen. No, they whatever. don't know it's going to kill them when they take the first hit. Uh, but I'm talking like if, if education of, comes in, right. in place, but, and, but some people feel like, well, it took away from my problems for that moment. Just like no, people who get into the drug game. At, if, okay, if example, case, hold on. If but that people, was the case, they would take rat poison. But people who get into the drug game, y'all always would say, well, I'm going to either die or end up in prison. You know this for a fact, but then they still end, they still full force in well, the drug game. Different. The drug game is a little different, though, because you got a chance to make it. Mm. If you becoming a drug addict, you don't have a chance to become a drug addict. See, the guy who gave, the guy who you're talking about, his first pill, the guy probably looked up to him. 
Mm. Yeah. yeah. He thought he was important, and that's why he was willing to accept something that came from him. Are there any functional drug addicts that's been drug addicts from Absolutely. for years? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so there are successful drug addicts then. That's not, so, that's not that's success. success. Yeah. But let me ask you this right here before you go. How's the, your, your, your side business with the dispensary? Dispensary. Uh, I'm, I'm still going through it with the city. I think, I think that, that we got everything lined up now uh, here in L.A., uh, my brand's still been going good, though. Okay. You know, the L.A. Kingpin is still going good. The mm -hmm. freeway, uh, I'm revamping freeway right now. Uh, but overall, though, the weed business is going great for me. I'm in, I'm in the other states. Boxing, I need to ask Hold on, you're, you're, how many siblings do you have? Because when I he Google... Said 20 so. You have a lot of siblings, but when me? I Google it, yeah. No, no. I only how many have, siblings? I only have... Um, because Google only said one brother, and it's the one that's in um, the coach of a Cubs team. That's no. probably wrong as hell. Is it wrong? That's what Google said. That's what Google said. When you Google, that's what Google you, said. About the boxing, the, the boxing before you get off of here. One thing about you always deal with boxing on a whole nother level. Like, and you talked about Kid Austin. And yeah. Last time we were talking. Anthony Peterson fight this week. Uh -huh. So, yeah. On so, Asian Burner's card. So, so, I'll be in Atlanta. Already. So I, that, already. So awesome. How's that? Everything going good in that aspect of your life? I feel like that. I just got off the phone with a kid that, uh. Probably gonna dominate boxing. Who is he? I ain't gonna mention. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody go get him right. He ain't signed yet. So <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Well, well, man, well tell us you. off camera so we know Correct. exactly who it hey, is. Hey, man, so. I'm gonna let him out of here, man. Thank you so much for coming on Boss Talk once again, man. Your second time, man. We'll be hey, on here again. You coming to Texas? You gotta come to my he, spot. You come to Texas all the time, don't nah, you? No, but we was going to New Orleans or yeah. somewhere last time you came. Yeah, I, I be, remember. I'll be to Texas. I'm, I'm gonna be working with. Uh, um, Ace out of Texas, you know he's working with, okay. that, with that new league. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, he wants me to come down and speak to his guys and and, and so forth. So all right, well when you come to Texas, you gotta come see me, man. CC gonna you. bring you over there anyway. I ain't worried no you. more. I Thank you, you so much for coming on Boss Talk One Hundred and One. Thank y'all for having me. It's again. been another great segment of Boss Talk One Hundred and One with a boss's talk. And we out. <laughs>